Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It is March the 10th, 2021. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and welcome to What Now America? Uh, the title of this show today is 1.9 trillion COVID relief passed. Will it help? And I'm going to go right to our guests on this very, very topic. I'd like to welcome Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, and Winston Welch. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Tim. Good morning. Jay, uh, about 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes ago, uh, the House passed the $1.9 trillion COVID bill. It now goes to President Biden for signature. This is a huge uh, financial package that they basically could not get uh, any Republican support on, both in the House and in the Senate. Um, so much for bipartisanship uh, negotiations and uh, agreements that didn't happen. But here we are with this huge, huge uh, COVID relief package. And I guess I'll go to the question is, is it really going to hit the target market that it was intended to help? Um, now, we know that if you're going to get $1,400 as an individual, your uh, wage level should not exceed $75,000. But if you look at a, a wage of $75,000, um, particularly in the red states, in the rural areas, that's not bad wage. That's pretty good. And so my question is, is this $1.9 trillion a little too generous? Hmm. I have to go out to the mailbox and wait for my check. Uh, although it's not at all clear it's coming. And, you know, and there's $150,000 uh, joint filing return. You get that too. And so there's rules around it, but you're right to raise the question because maybe there's some people who really don't need it. And uh, whether, you know, whether your income is a good, you know, a, a good conditional, um, a good parameter on whether you should get it, maybe that's not right because some people um, who have, you know, a lot of income in their tax return don't have a job. Maybe they've been digging into savings. Maybe it's not so good for them anymore. Anyway, uh, it's, they threw it on the wall. That's what happened here. And they threw it on a wall weeks and weeks ago, I guess when um, Joe Biden was first, you know, inaugurated and um, okay, and they stuck with it. You got to give them credit. They, they, there's a lot of provisions in that bill you really wonder about. It. I mean, Indian reservations, really? Uh, they're trying to correct every ill that you could ever imagine in the country. And a, a lot of it got by, uh, you know, the screening process. And it's still there. They threw it on the wall and a lot of it stuck. Well, is this a result because they knew they're going to have to go through a reconcilia reconciliation process and they could do it that way and basically stoke it up with all sorts of things they normally wouldn't get through passage? Well, yeah, I mean, it was, the idea was relief from COVID and make the whole country, you know, better, better economic form. And I think it will do that but for a while. You know, what strikes me, I wonder how you guys feel about this is, Okay, fourteen hundred dollars. That's it. That's it. Well, let's now let's yeah. back up a little. Um, you know, if, if you are a family of four and you have two children under the age of of seven, uh, each child is going to be three thousand six hundred dollars. So you had thirty six hundred and thirty six hundred plus another fourteen hundred plus uh, the spouse of fourteen hundred. Um, that's quite a bit of income into one family of the United States. Andrew, uh, what was his name? Andrew Wang would say. Yang, Yang, yeah. Yang would say, uh, "How about repeating that? How about doing some kind of thing where it happens every 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 other week or every month, uh, for six months, for a year, uh, sort of a guaranteed income, if you will, to keep keep things going?" And I really don't like the idea of giving out lump sums like that because people, you know, can spend it instantly. How how long does it take you to spend a lump sum? Not very long. And, and if they have no reserves now, for whatever reason, um, they're not going to reserve much of that. So it's going to be spent and gone. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. It, it certainly will you know, generate a lot of cash in the economy. And, and that's probably good. And it's a good, it's a good start okay, for, for Joe Biden and, and the Democrats. What troubles me, and you mentioned it more than anything, is that it was completely political. And uh, every Republican voted against it. There is no sign of collaboration here between the parties, none, zero. And the next thing that has to happen is uh, we get into the, the Voting Rights Act, which is really important for the long term, 
and we're going to run into that same, you know, partisan vote. And uh, I'm I'm really sad about that because I don't think that's going to pass. You can't do reconciliation on that or on so many other things that he has lined up in his pipeline. So I think you know this actually may be it. I yeah. mean, I, I'd be interested in how you guys feel about the other bills in the pipeline. Is he going to get them through on a bipartisan basis? The answer is probably no. Why? Uh, yeah. Because they would vote against them as a matter of principle. They want to make them look bad. They'll never vote for any initiative, good, bad, or otherwise. Well, as I said in the last show, um, they didn't use the last re reconciliation process under the Trump administration. So Joe Biden has that one. And then, of course, he just used one for the COVID uh, passage. So he's down, he's down to one reconciliation um, process left in his bag of tools. But let me just- It throw sounds like a canasta maybe, or poker. It sounds like a game. You have you know, Monopoly maybe? You yeah. have one more, one more choice, you know, and choose or, or if you're golfing, it's called a mulligan. You got one, yeah, this, you got one mulligan last left. time, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, the Pew just came out with a poll that 70% of Americans like this COVID bill as is. Um, now that might've been taken after the $15 wage was in or out, I don't know. But I think it's, they, they approved what Joe Biden was doing on this effort and 28% uh, opposed it. So it's rare to get 70% agreement on anything in this country. Uh, it's, it's amazing, it, it, it's registering so high for this COVID relief package. Well, I think there's two aspects to that, Tim. One is, uh, one is that he's been selling it and the Democrats have been selling it as hard as they could possibly sell it. It's the one thing they've been working on more than anything else, sell the country. The other is who's gonna say no to a free lunch? Who in the world go. is going to say no to, you know, here you get there all you... this money, 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 money. You don't want to say no? Um, okay. The only people who say no for reasons that are not at all clear is Republicans. That's irrational. But most people, most, most human being people are not going to say no to a free lunch. There aren't. And that's my, that goes to my question. Is the GOP senators and uh, re representatives in the House, are they risking a great deal by alienating those who really want to see this. And that means their own constituents. You want my answer? Is that, yes, some of their constituents would be wondering and scratching their head what, what happened you know, in Congress, in, in the Republicans, in, in the House and Senate. But on the other hand, you know, remember the fickle finger moves on. The press moves on. The news cycle moves on. And they figure there's plenty of time for the public uh, who got irritated uh, to forget all about that. And it would be up to Joe Biden and the Democrats to remind them over and over and over again, especially at the next election. All right, thank you. Hey, Winston, uh, they took out that very uh, controversial $15 per hour uh, minimum wage out of this COVID relief package. Uh, Joe Manchin probably had a big say in that. Do um, you think that was a good move or a bad move not to press further to either retain it or was it a wise idea to remove it? Well, I mean, he's the, he's the leader of the Democratic Party now, isn't he? Or he's the control mechanism or the pain point. So what he's Joe the wants- He's the ball. <laughs> yeah, he's got, what Joe wants is he's going to get. He did say, I, I think I read something that he said he was open to something about the filibuster. Um, I might have read that wrong, but I, I thought that there was probably the screws have been put on him on the other side as well, saying, dude, look, are you in our party or not? Uh, because- at some point, like Jay was saying, there was no no Republicans voted for this. And as this moves down the road, what else is going to be, you know, Voting Rights Act or, or anything? I think what, what what they'll find agreement on is probably other large scale things like infrastructure projects that bring the pork home. Um, you know, these bills are always just filled with with um, everything. You know, the kitchen sinks. Some of them, some things like that, fifteen dollars an hour. You mentioned. Um, you know, in a lot of states, getting fourteen hundred bucks is a lot of money. Um, if you're in Alabama or Mississippi or, or West Virginia, that's a lot of money. Um, I, you know, it's it's fourteen hundred bucks, but it's not going to go as far in uh, San Francisco or Seattle or New York or Honolulu. Um, but uh, if that was what was going to prevent it from happening, and where the minimum wage is, what is the minimum wage? Seven dollars an hour or something insane. Um, that has to come up on its own. 
maybe maybe it's just done by the states. I don't know, but if they had to take it out, they needed to take it out. And if that's what what caused it to pass, of course we need to have a living wage. But that's a completely different discussion on that we have literally trillionaires in this economy. And I'm all for people being rich. I, you know, being rich is glorious, but we also have incredible uh, disparities of of income of of opportunity now in America that are showing up educationally, socially, and in other ways. And that needs to be addressed at a more structural, fundamental level. But like you said, 70% of people said, yeah, this bill is great because who doesn't like free money? And the 28% that said they don't like it, you'd be hard pressed to find a company or an individual that's going to send back that check to the government if it comes to their house on principle. I bet Good the point. government's not going to Good get point. a lot of refunds on that. And it's probably <laughs> thing I would be surprised if organizations, even like the American Enterprise Institute or, 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 or whatever organization didn't apply for their PPP loans and all of that as well, because if they weren't, then they weren't doing, um, well, they could stand on principle, but if they weren't doing that, then they, they were sort of neglecting their responsibilities uh, for financial prudence of, of what they're, they're, they're given. So, uh, yeah, it's-, right, it's well, let, it me, was, let me take the other position on this. Let's say it's, uh, you know, 15 years ago and the Tea Party is just emerging. And the Tea Party, if you remember, one of their uh, main principles was uh, deficit control. So the first uh, uh, COVID relief was 2.1 trillion. The second one, which was this at the end of December of last year, was 900 billion. And this one's 1 1.9. So if you do some fast math, you're over $5 trillion. Now, apparently, deficits don't matter anymore for both the Democrats and the Republicans. But at some point, right. uh, we can't just keep rolling money off the, the printer machines and expect uh, not to have either inflation or a, a, or a collapsing US dollar. Well, that's coming down the road, but it's not here right now. Right here, right now, people are out of work. They're out of money. There's a rent moratorium expiring. Uh, even here in Hawaii, I was reading, what was it? 50% of businesses didn't pay at least one month's rent last year. Um, it, 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 I think that was something like that in Pacific Business News. It was uh, whatever happens in the future with inflation or the dollar going down. I mean, that's, it's just sort of inevitable, I think, um, on some level which is why you've seen these crazy things with Bitcoin going on, like fake, this, 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 this is a non, a non um, there's nothing there, but people are pouring money into it because they're seeing that in the future. However, as we saw with the Republican Party, they're not a party anymore that's based on principles as we understood conservative, um, uh, principled conservatism, the kind that perhaps Liz Cheney represents uh, very few, the very few you can you can pick them out that are willing to stand up and say that and it's probably what maybe uh, maybe a quarter of the party left that has some principled conservatism so anything about like uh, spend as much as you want the the, the, the the principles that we used to understand as conservative principles they're not there right now they may come well, back it would be nice know, to can see can I just jump in on this I mean ultimately we're going to have to pay the piper and Tim is right to raise the issue. At some point along the way, we're going to have to reckon with this, and it's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt the stock market. It's going to hurt the economy. Nobody wants to talk about that, but well, we, we don't know, know when that, that is. At the Jay. end That's of the, the day, problem. we're going to have to pay the piper. Yeah, but we don't it's know not when today. That is. It's, it's not, not today. today. People, yeah. people need that. They need the two trillion today, and I think it's a conceptual number. If you ask the average American, how what's America's debt? Um, they don't know, but they do know that housing prices in Hawaii went from 780 to 920 as an average sales price last year on Oahu. That's a huge increase in the price. So all of this stuff is going to figure out into calculus somewhere down the road. But for right now, they're worried about um, keeping food on the table, keeping the, the roof over their head. And so they're going to welcome that relief, period. OK. Hey, Winston, thank you. Hey, Stephanie, I'm going to kind of um return back to a question I asked Jay, and that is, uh, again, if you're a, a couple and you're earning $150,000, you're going to get $2,800 immediately, probably in the next week, uh, sent to your home or you know, through your bank account if you have automatic deposit. Um, was that level too high? Should have been $100,000 for a couple and, and $50,000 for an individual? Or do you think the level set was appropriate and just right? 
Well, that's an interesting question. And um, I, 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 I haven't really thought much about it as a specific number or who, what the cut is, but of the cut at the level of income is. I think that is a repeat of what there was before. So I guess can be- It was a repeat, yes. But another point is no matter, all those people making that, that kind of money, they're probably, as you or, or Jay mentioned earlier, they're not necessarily going to spend that money on hot, new hot dogs for their kids. I mean, they're going to spend that money all over the place. So all that money is, uh, is they should put some in Bitcoin or, or some savings if they don't have any, which Winston mentioned earlier. But anyway, that, that money's all going into the economy. So that's going to start whipping whipping things back up. Well, is it going in the economy? What if people had to borrow money for the last year just to put food on the table and pay the utility bills and pay the mortgage and they had to borrow? Um, I would think if, if they now have an influx of cash, they have an opportunity to pay that debt back down. Well, sure um, they do that. But lots of them didn't have that problem if you're getting up to 150 k a year. Well, I mean, there you go. I, I, I guess my point is, I'm not sure this money is going to the exact proper target market. Um, I think there are a lot of people that had more need that you could have spread this out further for the people at 100,000 as a couple or 50,000 as an individual. Um, I don't know. I guess my point is that it is all going to come back around to all of us, okay, because it's going in the economy one way or another after those people in high need are going to pay off uh, what they need. And the other, the other aspect of this is that I've learned from Brian Schatz's statements to Hawaii that this is actually going to relieve Hawaii, and I don't know about the other states, maybe it's similar, but we're going to be relieved of this catastrophe of a huge deficit. In fact, we're going to be on our way back up to par. Even the state collection of taxes uh, is not as dire as they thought it was. So we're not going to be as short there. So there's a really good uh, a good point that's made actually by the Republicans because a lot a lot of that money is going to more than those kinds of, of uh, payments to people. I mean, education's getting a huge batch of money. It's going to make a huge difference. All the small business. There's millions and millions, which I won't go back over here, but that I wrote down that are going to all these other places to heart. They're going to to um, you know, the National Fund for um, access to uh, or saving the workforce. There's all there all of the, so there's millions and millions, hundreds of millions coming from this bill into other places in Hawaii that are going to just bounce. Not to Hawaii, up. but uh, you know, around the nation. I guess I'll, I think this is an opportune time to bring up uh, Lindsey Graham, Senator Lindsey Graham's comments that um, part of this COVID relief bill had dedicated $5 billion to um, farmers, uh, minority farmers, to either gain access to loans they weren't allowed to gain access to through the US De um, um, Department of uh, Agriculture. And so give them access for that or um, pay off debt to forgive loans that they had been carrying just to keep their farms uh, in existence. And, and Lindsey Graham referred that to as reparations. And um, I'm just curious. Right. <laughs> that's it's that is like, the exact okay. term. That is the exact term he used. And I guess well, I'm getting, what I'm getting at is there are like most bills. I call them a Christmas tree, and everyone in the middle of the night hangs a little Christmas tree ornament on it. To what degree yeah, do we have sorts of ornaments on this that they got to take money home? Look at Kentucky. But Mitch McConnell has so much money. They got bridges they don't even need down there. And the people are still starving. But and um, but my point is that for Bi from Biden's point of view in the administration, this is a one-shot deal, as you all already... Oh, I, I want to speak to that. I think that's really an excellent point. You know, this discloses, this reveals to us uh, that the Congress is dysfunctional. And the government is dysfunctional. In a perfect world, with all those economists, really high quality economists in the administration, they would tune the economy. They would say, well, okay, it's March, let's do this in March. And this is April, we'll do a little something in April. And we'll keep on going down the pike and we'll, we'll adjust everything depending on how the economy and all these other factors, including COVID and the vaccines are working. But we can't do that, why? Because we, we're, not, we're not bipartisan. You can't get these bills through every day. You know, look how long it took Biden to get this one. You know, it started, what, the 20th of uh, 
of January and now only, and this is this big priority. So, you know, what I'm saying is that ideally in a perfect world, Congress would be able to act in a much more nimble fashion, recognizing that it cannot, will not, does not act in a nimble fashion, that everything is clogged up in Congress and you can't repeat this kind of bill. That's what we have. It's not the best solution. Yeah, and but it's so much like a football game, right? So it, every scrimmage, you can, that they have an overall plan to get to the goal, okay? But it's every single inch, centimeter, is a scrimmage to get there. And that seems to be more our model of government, especially these days. And there isn't any cooperation at all, except to be in each other's ways. So uh, if that's the way our government has been, uh, you know, deployed, we need to start thinking about what Biden might help lead us to thinking about, which is back to compromise, negotiation, arbitration, whatever it is that you can change this game so we can meet the needs of the people. But I think back to the point is that this is one time and it may be Biden's not going to get another thing through depending on what, what comes up. I agree. So I, I mean, think Joe Biden may- said, go big, let's go big. And he, I think he did. <laughs> yeah, I think, I he, think did. he did. It. This will hold him and get him through some tough stuff to come. And hopefully he can turn it around. We'll see. Yeah. But hey, anyhow, Jay, um, okay, thank you, Stephanie. Appreciate it. Jay, um, in the southern states or around the country, 43 states actually, we have over 253 bills uh, proposed that will limit voting access for constituents or non-constituents. Um, that's quite a staggering number. We know we have a, a proposed uh, bill, HR1. Uh, later in August, I believe there is a, another bill, um, HR4, which is called the, the John Lewis Voting Act, that will come up on the August uh, 2021 calendar in the legislature. Uh, you brought up the point that this is a, a critical bill that needs to be looked at uh, because what the GOP is trying to do is really curtail access to the voting booths. And they know that's why they lost Georgia. They know that's the sole reason why uh, a, a red state went blue. And you had two Democrat senators elected over two GOP established senators. Um, what are your thoughts about this attempt by the GOP to thwart uh, a fair and clean election? Yeah, I mean, aside from the destruction of the planet by climate change, um, and I suppose the, the previously uh, very threatening COVID, maybe it's not so threatening today except the variants, this is the most threatening thing to our democracy. Um, a, they're succeeding. They're in a civil war and they're in so many state houses passing so many bills that are obviously disgracefully um, racist and voter suppression against every principle of the founding fathers. Um, it's, it's really hideous, and the world is looking at us as a joke. Let me, let me run down this list and get your reaction to it. Of Some of the things that there are in their bills um, throughout the South and, and other parts of the country, Iowa as well. Um, one, it'll be a misdemeanor not to deliver food or drink to people standing in line. Um, that's crazy. Uh, the restriction of the ballot boxes uh, dropped around various counties. They want to limit, severely limit the number of drop, drop-off boxes for your your ballot. Um, Increased ID registration uh, requirements. Um, No absentee voting, unless you have a really, really good reason that only fits their definition of why you should even think about voting absentee. Um, Cut out weekend voting. And that's directly, I think, directed at um, Black uh, Americans that go to church on Sunday. And a a, a big tradition is souls, souls to the booth, the voting booth on Sunday. So if you take out the voting on Sunday, um, they have nowhere to go. Yeah, well, I'm so right. it's, it's, it's all racist. It's all racist and it's all, all de- anti-democratic. And here's the worst thing. They're passing these bills. They're passing them in various legislatures. And, and of course, there are lawsuits questioning them on constitutional grounds, uh, which should wind up in the Supreme Court. And, you know, this is the big test of the Supreme Court, well, whether they will preserve our democracy. But here, on, 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 the, on the other side, in Congress, that, that bill, um, that's, you know, this, the voting rights bill, it's coming up now. I mean, I guess 
It's important for Biden. It should be. He's trying to get it through. But but you know, the Republicans are never going to vote for it. And if we have cloture and a filibuster, it's not going to pass. It's yeah. simply not. There's no well, reconciliation possible. Let me throw this out. Bill. Joe Biden just recently signed an executive order um, expanding voting rights, um, access to voting uh, booths. Uh, how does that executive order counterplay off all these 153 bills in various states? Uh, which one takes priority, an executive order or something passed by an individual state legislature? The courts will have to decide. But you know, it's not a pretty picture. And uh, the reality is that the legislation passed um, by these various Republican state houses, state legislatures, is going to have to be tested in court. Well, see uh, that, and and may fail. I mean, I mean, what I mean is the attacks on them may fail. So what we have now is, is pandemonium, a civil war, chaos between now and, and 2022. And the trouble is that we ought to pay attention to the crises that are going on in the country, not in having a civil war. It's the wrong time for that. It's always the wrong time for that. And so I'm, I'm very well, that concerned goes down about to, this. Um, that goes down to Winston's comment about Joe Manchin and his role in the Senate and how he's the key vote and whether or not, really comes down to whether or not the filibuster should be eliminated or not. And uh, Winston, you, ap you correctly stated that he, he is open now to some um, revisions of the filibuster. Now in the old days, you know, remember that, that movie of Jimmy Stewart uh, Mr. Washington, or Mr. Uh, Smith. Smith goes to Washington and he's doing a filibuster on the, uh, the floor in the House of Representatives and he's going on and on. Well, I think Joe Manchin is open to getting back to those days where you just don't go, okay, we, you don't got the 60s, next item. Uh, Joe Manchin may be in favor of, of having a uh, Lindsey Graham or a Ted Cruz stand on the Senate floor for until they run out of breath. Uh, to exercise their filibuster rights and to not make it easy for them like they have it now. Winston, what do you think about that? I think if I were Joe Biden, I would be pouring every possible federal resource into West Virginia. I, everyone gets his own bridge. Everyone gets his own school, <laughs> gold-plated toilets, whatever he can do. <laughs> you, you mean know, Abraham I, Lincoln of Paola to get your, your, your amendment, whatever. your 13th Amendment passed? Sadly, whatever works. But, you know, as I was looking uh, just on uh, online for this, um, HUD, uh, the, the urban uh, housing and urban development for the U.S., they, they said that low income in Honolulu in 2019, if you were looking for a loan or, or to qualify for subsidized housing or affordable housing, single person living on Oahu in 2019 was sixty seven thousand five hundred dollars. Um, so the seventy five. Well, that seems like a lot. Um, it's it's just above the low income level. The average mean wage here, as by uh, assuming a Bureau of Labor Statistics, and I still think that those are accurate, fifty four thousand nine hundred in two thousand nineteen. So, this money, even in Hawaii, will go a long way for a lot of people. Now, you know, those are mean. Those are means. They're not um, real, but. Uh, I think that, you know, I, I still, I, I wake up every day now, I don't have to go and check what Joe Biden did or didn't do. I don't worry about the, the state of the nation. We're not in a state of hyper alert anymore. I think everyone is calmer now. He, um, you know, by pulling out the, uh, the, the, the minimum wage and the, uh, oh, uh, the, 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 what was the unemployment thing was going from 400 to 300 or, or something like that. These were minor changes relatively compared to the massive bill that went through. So he got some pork out. He got some, some uh, payback right now, what he needed to do. And now he can get down to, the, to, um, to good governance and getting rebuilding, restructuring, reforming, and uh, stabilizing our entire system that was dismantled before our eyes these last four years. I think that's what he's going to concentrate on. Um, it, it seems uh, there's no giant scandals coming out of his administration. There's no incredible gaffes that we have to look at. So uh, I think, you know, for a while, I, I think if we can just settle on a little bit more boring, everyone's going to be calmed down. Joe Biden is the baking <laughs> soda that this nation needs. And I'm I can settle on a lot more boring. Thank you. <laughs> After the last four years, I could use a lot more boring. Boring right, is we've run out of time. We've run out of time, but I'm going to go around the horn here and get your last comments uh, or what you think is in store for the country 
uh, in the next week. Uh, Stephanie, to you. Thank you. I think there is a nightmare going on that we cannot let up on. In fact, we need to do something about it, which is that as, uh, as Jay mentioned, and I was interrupting him because the, the Civil War was about states' rights. I mean, that's all I ever heard about. I never heard a thing about slavery or read about it in all of my U.S. history courses a long time ago. But anyway, it's states' rights. And that, that's what's happened is now they're building up the states as they have built up the states and they're building up the states' rights issue. So that's what the Supreme Court will be asked to deal with again um, as to, you know, what is it that um, is going to fare well, either the federal or the states' rights. And then I wanted to just mention that thank you for uh, Biden's um, camouflaging of this $15 mi minimum wage. Um, lure, because I see it as a lure to get um, the Republicans in and then also to let it go so that they'll feel that they've had a piece of the action. So I, I credit him with that and well done. And uh, Joe Manchin, of course, wants to be the good guy and he's, uh, but he also wants to have it both ways. So I don't know how that's going to come out. But uh, right. we now have the standard up $15 minimum. West Virginians would love that too, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thank you, Stephanie, so much. Uh, Jay, your last thoughts, comments. What's up for the next week? Oh, uh, well, uh, we'll see what uh, the rest of uh, Joe Biden's um, initiatives are. We'll see how well they do. We'll see more of those bills in the Republican state houses all across the country. Um, I, I, don't, I can't think of anything more that, uh, and we may see some action on the filibuster. I believe that would be a very positive move. You know, one of the things, uh, the, the, the problems with the Constitution is it hasn't, been, it hasn't been amended often enough. The country has gone through zillions of changes, profound changes every day. Has the Constitution kept up? No. And has, you know, has the law kept up? And I think it's very important that we make the changes necessary to comport with the changes in our society. One of them is getting rid of the filibuster. The other thing, the other thing I want to say is, uh, I think we're together on this, um, and that is, is that we got a problem looking for uh, 2022. It's only around the corner. And if the Republicans, potentially under Trump's influence, um, you know, take the Senate, take the House, we are going to be back exactly where Winston would, would like to leave. We, we're, we're going to be back where we were in chaos and in, in legislation that doesn't give a rip about the people. That's why voting rights is so important. That's why we have to keep our eyes on 2022. All right. Thank you, Jay. Um, I like the idea of a, a Hawaiian-style con-con maybe every 50 years in this country. Who knows? All right, Winston, your last thoughts, comments? Concerns, mm. questions. Uh, well, criticism. you know, I, uh, we uh, we're we're always evolving, uh, evolving towards a more perfect union, and things happen slowly on that level. And I, mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, when you can go into a country like Japan after the war and rewrite the constitution, and you put in women's rights straight out of the bat, and those sorts of things, that's nice. It doesn't always mean that they exist because they're still ranked just above, you know, a lot at the bottom of the barrel for those types of things. So. Um, we have our mechanisms in this country. It's not perfect. Um, we have a lot of work to do. There's no doubt about it. There's a lot of dangerous elements out there. But when this main demagogue and irritant has been gone and out of our sight and out of our sound for even a short period of time, we are we will forget and people will enjoy this peace that they have with their friends, with their neighbors, with their co-workers of just not having to have this in their face screaming all the time. Now, I'm not watching Fox News and America One or whatever they're, 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 they're playing, and I'm sure they're it's the same old hits. But I think on some level, people realize, you know what, that was that was not good for our nation on many levels. And. If Joe, if Joe Biden is smart, he will try and look at the actual real grievances, if there are any, that are under the ugliness, under the pettiness, under the, the, uh, the awfulness, and say, was there anything there? And if so, let's try and address it. We have the most qualified person to ever occupy the White House, uh, period. He's doing a fantastic job. I, I'm just looking forward to seeing how he can move forward. Like Stephanie was saying, that 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 fifteen dollar an hour, to, including the Republicans, maybe some of them will realize it's in the best in their best interest ultimately to work towards um, a better America. And uh, that's my hope. 
uh, for this week and for the next two years and four years and forever. Okay. You get the last word and great words those were. I want to thank my (laughs) guests, Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, and Winston Welch. Thank you for joining us on What Now America. Join us next week, Wednesday, 11 o'clock. I'm Tim Epichelli, your host. We'll see you next week. What Now America? Aloha.